Good morning. It's four o'clock in the morning. Just got to work. I look like I just climbed out of a pillow. But I wanted to share with you guys what the salt rising thing is all about. For those of you that are interested, I'm going to show you what the salt rising looks like. So last night, or yesterday afternoon rather, about noon, I set uh, what we call a mash. So that would be the very first starter for the salt rising, which is going to be cornmeal, flour, soda, and hot milk. Okay? That has to set for about 14 hours or so. Once we've set that and we keep it at the right temperature for about 12, 14, 16 hours, whatever it takes, you end up with this. See that right there? That's what it ends up looking like. Whew, and this stuff stinks really bad. If you've ever been around salt rising, you know the stink. Now this is when it, it stinks somewhat bad but what you're looking at here on top of this mash that we've set is a whole bunch of bacteria that has grown and has been feeding and right now it's kind of hit its peak state so it's it's really really nasty in there but it's hungry so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to set a sponge this is the second stage now is the sponge and we're gonna feed this bacteria with flour and hot water. You can see some of the bubbling. There's a little bit of bubbling if you're, if you're looking at it. It's still active in there, but it's kind, of hit its, it's kind of hit its prime at this point. It's about as much bacteria as we can grow just off of the ingredients we provided it to begin with. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some hot water and we're gonna add some flour and we're gonna turn this into a sponge. It's gonna be like a really thick pancake mix. So once I get that mixed in, I'll show you what the sponge looks like. Oh, did you see the bubble pop right there? Yep, so I'll show you what the sponge looks like, and then we're going to leave the sponge set for a few hours. Okay, so this is what the sponge looks like once it's been set. You can see, like I said, it looks kind of like a pancake batter, really thick pancake batter. And I had to split it between these two huge buckets because this little bit of sponge here is going to grow from here all the way up to about here in both buckets and so what will happen is if I leave it in just one bucket we're gonna have a big overflow of stuff so this sponge is gonna sit now for a few hours and it's gonna grow so I'll show you what it looks like once it's done so this one here take a look at it and you'll see what it looks like when it's finished all right it's been a couple of hours we've got some other things going look there's there's the last batch of punch keys mixing right there. But we've got, look how much it's come up. Both buckets. And you can see that it's still growing. You can see the dome on this, on this plastic here. That means there's still a lot of activity going on in there. And what we're going to wait for now is we're going to wait until it gets right to the peak where it stops growing and starts to fall a little bit. And that's when we know that it can grow no more. And then we'll take that and we'll mix it in with the rest of our ingredients to make the bread. So we'll let this sit carefully for a little while longer. Okay, see all that bubbling gooey yumminess? This is where it really is stinky right here. Look at that, look at it bubbling. So this bacteria has reached its peak. So you can see it's started to fall now. So we're gonna take this bubbling stuff, we're gonna add it to our bread flour and stuff and this is what's going to become our third stage where we mix the bread and make it. So this is what we're looking for right here, a lot of activity in the bacteria. This is where everybody clears the room because it's going to be stinky and gaggy and yucky and nasty. So I'm going to dump this stuff in and mix it up. We'll have some bread pretty soon. Okay, we mixed up our dough. And instead of letting it proof, it goes straight to the bench. So this dough ends up being a really dense, really hard, like, bread dough. It's not a super soft bread dough. But we've got it all formed up into bread rolls. We're going to let it relax just a little bit, and then we're going to run it through and turn it into loaves of bread. Stick it in the pans and get it proofed up and ready for baking. All right, we've got the bread in the oven now, and there's something I want you to notice. This is what makes this bread so difficult. If you looked at my pictures yesterday, you'll see that the bread was puffed up like this high above the pans. See that? So it's like a completely different proof. And even though we mix this bread exactly the same way every single time, 
Sometimes it comes out as a big, huge, puffy loaf. Sometimes it comes out a little bit on the flat side. That's what today's is going to turn out like, a little bit on the flat side. It's the same exact bread. It's just somehow or another the bacteria, the way it's grown, acts differently with each batch. Also, not only does the size change sometimes, but also the flavor and the aroma might change. Some days it's a little bit strong, some days it's not quite so strong. Now right now with the oven open, I can smell a whole bunch of that salt rising smell coming out of the oven. And I'll tell you, it smells absolutely delicious, but it won't be until the bread is cooled and sliced that we'll find out whether or not that aroma and that flavor stayed as strong as it is right now. So if you buy a loaf of this bread, you'll find that sometimes it might look a little bit smaller, sometimes it might look a little bit bigger, sometimes it tastes a little bit stronger, sometimes it doesn't taste quite as strong, but the bread itself is exactly the same. The concept of it is, is the same. We're harboring the bacteria, which is the original way that salt rising bread was made, and we're using that as a leavening for our bread. So now we're gonna wait for this to finish baking, and once it's finished baking, it's gonna come out of the oven, and everything will be good to go. All right, here's today's finished batch. So you can see they came out a little flatter than the last couple of batches have. And again, it's nothing that we that we do on our end that causes that. Uh, it's all about the bacteria and how it forms. And the last thing that I've had people ask me is why we put a coat of oil on the top. Well, this dough is pretty dry. It's not a very hydrated dough. And so if we don't oil the top, what'll happen is the tops of the bread will start to crumble and and uh, crack and it could break and look terrible before you have a chance to bring it home. So we put a little oil on top of it to prevent it from doing that. All right, well, hey, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you when you stop down to pick up some salt rising bread.